this presentation will demonstrate the steps necessary to successfully run DOTD testing procedure TR-233. Surface resistivity indication of concrete's ability to resist chloride ion penetration. This presentation was developed by the Technology Transfer and Training Section of the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. All right, so once we get our samples in from the field, uh, either 4 by 8 cylinders here or sometimes 6 by 12 cylinders, one thing we want to do is go ahead and remove them from the molds, label them, mark them, and get them into our curing room for curing. All right, so we've extracted our samples. Now what we want to do is we want to transfer our labels from the mold to the cylinder. Make sure they're labeled properly. We don't want to uh, lose them. It's just lot 63. Yeah. Sample. All right, now that we've removed our specimen from the molds, what we want to do is go ahead and mark them and prepare them for our resistivity test using our, our little template here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our template, we're going to set it on top of our specimen right here, and then at each corner, which indicates 90 degrees, what we're going to do is, is do a mark. So we're going to mark it here at one point, mark it here. All right, we're going to repeat that process with each specimen. Hold our template in place and mark our 90 degree angles. All right, now we got the tops of our cylinders marked. What we want to do is go ahead and transfer those marks to the bottom of the sample. What we'll do is we'll take a right angle of some sort. We'll set it on the top of our sample, line up our marks. Take our marker and transfer that mark to the bottom. And do that for each angle. Now if the top of our specimen is a little off, then what it can do is it can shift your line. You need to use your best judgment, look at it real good, and make sure that your, your lines are pretty lined up. If your lines aren't lined up, whenever you set your meter on it, you'll know your meter will wobble a little bit. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mark each mark right here in 90 degree increments. I'm going to mark them on top. You can mark them on the side. See zero here. Put my zero, 90, one eighty, and two seventy. You could have also written it on the side of the sample if you wanted to. Go ahead and mark all my samples here.
All right, we've identified our samples with the lot number information and the project number. We've marked our cylinders for resistivity testing. Now what we need to do is we need to go to get them into our curing room for our 28-day curing period. The specimen should be stored in accordance with DOTD TR230 in a facility that meets AASHTO M201 requirements. The specimens are to be tested 28 days from the date of pour. This is a non-destructive test and can be run repeatedly. The longer the specimens cure, the better the test results will be. All right, before we can run our test, what we want to do is make sure we have all the equipment necessary. We have our resistivity meter here. Turn it on, make sure that the uh, battery is charged. If not, what we do is unscrew this little cap right here, plug in our charger and charge it. Um, you don't have to charge it too often. We have our, our reference plate here. Basically, it gives a set resistance uh, to check our meter, to calibrate our meter. Uh, we have our specimen holder here. Holds our specimen in place while we do the test. We have a, a pan here, a shallow pan of water. That way we can fill up our reservoir tips here before we run our test. We'll show you all that. Our samples have been marked, uh, so those are ready to go. And then we have our clean towels. All right, before we can test our samples, what we want to do is you know, check our calibration with our, our reference template here. Uh, as you can see, our reference template, it's got two strips here. The top strip will give you 12 kilo ohms re resistance, and your bottom one will give you 90 kilo ohms per centimeter resistance. So what we'll do is we'll take our meter. Our meters basically have two buttons. We have our power button, which is also the hold button. Whenever you get your reading on the sample, you would hold that reading until you uh, wrote it down. And then if you wanted to save the, the reading, the bottom button is the save button. Uh, but most likely, unless you're testing in the field, which you shouldn't be, then uh, you won't be using that. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn on our meter. When our meter gets turned on, what we're going to do is first we're going to start off by putting it on our top strip here, our first one, which is our 12 kilo ohm per centimeter resistance. So you had the hold button there. Our reading is 12 kilo ohms per centimeter. Release that hold. I'm going to test it on the 90. Same thing. I held my reading and we have 90. So our device is calibrated, ready to test our specimen. All right, our specimen, first thing we want to do is take our clean towels and go ahead and blot off the outside, make sure we get them close to our SSD condition. We don't want any excess moisture on the surface. We're going to find our zero degree mark, set it in our specimen holder here, uh, facing straight up. All right, we have our specimen in our specimen holder. We've checked our calibration of our device. Now what we want to do is fill up our tips right here, our reservoirs, with water. These are little compressible tips here. What you do is you put them in a pan of water and you press those tips in until there's no more air bubbles coming out. Tips are fully saturated. So on our zero degree plane here, our initial line, what we do is we're going to set our meter, we're going to compress our tips, hit our hold button, and there's our reading. Our first reading is 255 kilo ohms per centimeter. We're going to record that on our standard worksheet for sample one. We're going to rotate our sample 90 degrees and repeat the process. All right, 246. Rotate 90 degrees to our 180 degree plane. Two hundred and seventy, and then get our last reading. Two hundred fifty-six. All right. After four measurements on the sample, what we want to do is refill our tip reservoirs with water by compressing them in our pan of of water that we have here. And what we want to do is take our readings again. So we rotated our sample back to the, 
to the zero degree mark, we're going to take our second set of readings at 90 degree intervals. Two hundred and thirty-two. Rotate ninety degrees to our ninety degree mark. Two hundred and fifty-five. Two hundred and seventy degree plane. So, um, two hundred and sixty-six. All right. So we've measured our first sample here. Two rounds of measurements. So we have eight total readings for this sample. And we're going to repeat the process with all four of our test specimens. The meter's accuracy is to the tenth of a kiloohm when the value is below 200 kiloohms per centimeter and to the whole number above 200 kiloohms per centimeter. All of the values recorded during this training video were above the 200 kiloohm per centimeter mark. DOTD has developed a standard worksheet to use for the resistivity test. The test procedure and standard worksheet are designed for testing samples in groups of three specimens. As you saw in this video, four specimens were submitted and tested. Only the results for the first three specimens were used. The fourth specimen was submitted as a backup had any of the first three specimens been damaged during molding or curing. An automated calculation spreadsheet was developed to ease the calculations and classification of a lot sample. The top portion of the form is where the project and lot information is located. The second and third sections are for the sample identification and test data, including field acceptance test results. The automated template will calculate the individual specimen's test average as well as the group's lot average. Once averaged, the template will select the proper penetration classification that the lot falls within. The eight individual readings are averaged for each specimen, and then the averages of the three specimens are used to calculate a lot average. The lot average should fall into one of these five categories. A lot average for 4 by 8 inch cylinders of 27 kiloohms per centimeter or more is considered acceptable to the department. As more chloride ions penetrate the specimen, the lower the reading on the meter. Any lot that consists of 4 by 8 inch specimens that falls below 27 kiloohms per centimeter is considered failing. A blank form is also available to use to record your resistivity readings. The test procedure can be downloaded from DOTD's Materials Lab website under the Testing Procedures Manual tab. Should you have any questions or concerns about the resistivity meter or test procedure, please contact Tyson Rupnow, Senior Concrete Research Engineer at LTRC. If you would like to see changes made to any of DOTD's training materials, please contact the Technology Transfer and Training section at 225-767-9125.